I'm always a bit surprised when I get accused of being anti-progressive, as if it's a bad thing, like being anti-clean air or anti-cure for cancer. I'm pro both of those things, of course, but only if it doesn't cause offence. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings here by having civilised values, as I know from experience how upsetting that can be to some of you on the hysterical wing of the progressive movement. In fairness, though, the accusation is true. I am anti-progressive, but only for moral reasons. If not for the spiteful, underhand nastiness and shallow vindictiveness of the progressive mindset, the sanctimonious moralising, the phony liberality, the assumption of moral superiority and the arrogance in that assumption, not to mention the instinctive recourse to deliberate misrepresentation, slurs, insults and maliciously slanderous labels in place of argument, if not for all that, I wouldn't have such a problem with progressives, because unlike them, I'm a liberal kind of guy. Now, I know that some people still think that progressive means liberal in the positive sense of live and let live, tolerant of different ideas and so on. Well, clearly it means the opposite of that, but it hasn't always been that way. Progressive is a kind of mutation from liberal, like a cancerous growth on the liberal ethos. It's what happens when traditional liberal guilt turns septic and becomes self-hatred and then inevitably falls prey to cultural Marxism, which is innately poisonous and hates everyone, and before you know it, live and let live has morphed into conform or be punished, no platformed, ostracised, demonised, smeared, slandered, shouted down and silenced. Silencing people is very progressive and very Marxist too, have you noticed? But it's not very liberal. The fact is, no truly liberal-minded person could be a progressive. They simply wouldn't qualify. Try it yourself and see. Try publicly advocating liberal values like freedom of thought, of conscience, free speech, individual liberty, democracy, secularism, civil rights, you know, the ideas of the Enlightenment, and you are guaranteed to be called a far-right extremist, a hate monger, a bigot, a racist, a fascist, or a Nazi, yes, a Nazi, by progressives, not by liberals. It's always progressives, never liberals, who will rush to sign a petition to get somebody banned if they disagree with them, or else they'll try to shout them down, especially in those cesspits of intellectual fascism that still have the nerve to call themselves universities, where the most progressive thing you can do is to prevent other people hearing opinions that you happen to disapprove of in your capacity as sole moral arbiter of the universe, and it's always progressives, never liberals, who go out of their way to destroy a person's career if they say the wrong thing in a light-hearted moment. And if you really want a reason to despise progressives, there's one you can take to the bank. At one time, it would have been a compliment to be called progressive because it's quite a forward-looking, positive-sounding word, but now it's hard to think of a more damning insult because whatever positive connotations that word used to have are long gone. Now it's a word that stigmatizes people as it represents all that's craven, irresponsible and rotten on our moral landscape. Now when we hear the word progressive, we know that a formerly liberal cause has been poisoned by cultural Marxism and is no longer fit for human consumption. The movements for women's rights and gay rights have both been hijacked in this way by self-righteous progressives who've taken it upon themselves to exclude people whose views they disapprove of. So, for example, you could be the gayest person on the planet, but if you voted for Trump in America or for UKIP in Britain or if you support Israel or if you oppose the Islamization of the West, you're no longer welcome in the Pride Parade. It's not for all gay people anymore, and especially it's not for you. Excluding people is very progressive. Hysterical finger-pointing, labelling people in the harshest terms for the mildest views, all very, very progressive and very Marxist too, have you noticed, but not very liberal. So how did we arrive at this sorry situation? Well, decades ago, when Marxist intellectuals realised that they couldn't provoke a class war because nobody was interested in their dull economic theories, they decided instead to target the culture. The words we use, the values we hold, 
in order to try and break society down into antagonistic identity grievance ghettos to fracture it beyond repair so that a new progressive socialist utopia could arise from the ruins. Yes, they, they really do believe this stuff. And it was a shrewd move too. Policing people's thoughts and opinions cuts off the primary source of resistance. Political correctness has done that job very efficiently indeed, and over the course of a generation or so has managed to extract the marrow from our collective spine so slowly we barely noticed it happening until we were confronted with Generation Snowflake, like some kind of mutant spawn. Political correctness is cultural Marxism in action. It even sounds like something out of the old Soviet Union. Clinical, emotionless, its purpose to instruct and coerce and to punish non-compliance. That's bound to appeal to a certain mentality, wouldn't you say? All that's missing is the electric shock treatment. Not that progressives would need that, of course, because having no respect for truth or for language, they already enjoy access to a full arsenal of false malicious smears, which they generally use in a scattergun fashion as a first resort, because as progressives, not liberals, their primary objective is not to understand and to offer a counter-argument to an opposing view, but to crush it. In this way, progressives have a lot more in common with religious zealots than they do with liberals. We see the same instinctive intolerance of dissent, or heresy to give it its correct name, the same righteous moral condemnation, sinners and heretics must be punished severely and forever. So if you say the wrong thing in a light-hearted moment, progressives, not liberals, will actively attempt to destroy your career and your life and they'll do it solely to demonstrate to other illiberal progressives how wretchedly progressive, not liberal, they are. So yes, I am anti-progressive. Partly for the sake of my mental health, obviously, but also because progressive values are essentially Marxist values, although most progressives are too dim to realise it, and Marxism is, of course, moral poison. In a nutshell, progressivism is Marxism attempting to wear a liberal mask and failing. The militant Marxist and the militant progressive are birds of a feather. They have the same aims. They share a common purpose. Their ideal world is a world without borders that's impossible to govern democratically and without free speech so that nobody can object. It's a world where you and I no longer matter because we no longer have a voice. And therefore, it's a world from which there is no way back, and there is nothing liberal about that.